All right, so after much deliberation and wait, I finally decided on what I'm going to do with that speaker or how I'm going to improve it and where I'm going to take it forward. Now, because I really like the sound quality of the SB Acoustics uh, speaker, in fact, I like it so much that when I'm listening to music, I'm having it on because it's adding some mid bass and it's adding some highs that were just missing with the uh, Polk Audio uh, RTI A7s that you see in the back. It just sounds really good with the two together. Either one on their own, I, I almost, I'm missing something if I don't have them going. Anyway, how do I make it better? How do I make it complete? After a bunch of deliberation and reading some of the comments and uh, doing my own research, this is the speaker that I decided to come up with uh, was as a third and an addition, and I think it's meant to be, and I'll tell you why. So this is the SB Acoustics SB23 MF uh, CL45. So one of the things that uh, got me attracted to it right away is seeing the linear coil travel is quite a bit higher. It's got about the same frequency or the same hertz, and its uh, power handling is also up there as well. So this thing should be able to produce quite a bit more bass than uh, the eight inch driver that's in there right now. As you can see by the sound curve, it uh, goes right down pretty much flat to around uh, about 70 or so. And then uh, it kind of has a little bit of a weird uh, blip going on right at the really, really low end down to 20 Hertz. So I decided to take this thing, downloaded this, uh, downloaded this PDF here and made my FRD ZMA files and I brought that into XM. Now here's the cool thing. So here's the speaker that we're looking at back there, but here's the speaker just with the curves that the way that they are. Now watch what happens when I just plug in this speaker. You'll notice that the curve comes up quite a bit but now my high end ends up too high. But if I just short this uh, resistor out, look at that. That's not far off of a pretty dang flat curve. And I don't need to uh, invert any of the uh, polarity on any of these drivers, as you can see that uh, is not working. So it's literally just add this speaker, take out a resistor, build another box, and see how it sounds. What, what took it even further, what uh, I liked as well, is when I modeled this thing in WinISD, and uh, sorry, there's a port velocity. I was checking this thing out just right before I made this video. If I look at the transfer magnitude and uh, kind of set it up for a nice flat curve, it takes it down to about 50, somewhere in there. And I can bump this up if I want by changing the uh, frequency but I'm happy just leaving it with the default settings for now. Anyway, 0.703 cubic feet for a box size. So that's always really nice when you don't have to build this monster box, uh, especially for testing. Initially, <laughs> the fewer times I've got to buy and cut down MDF sheets to make speakers, the better. So while I'm learning, this is looking like a good option. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna order this thing up. It looks like the right solution for me. Taking out a resistor, wiring it in, and I'm just gonna literally put another box or build another box, stick the stack it underneath, hook it all up, and we're gonna see how that turns out. So if uh, you wanna see how that thing sets up when this is all said and done, uh, it'll be posted on the side here as soon as that video is made, as soon as the speaker shows up and I get that whole thing put together. So uh, wish me luck and <laughs> give me comments on what do you think this is going to turn out to be like.